afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the uh, third in a series of webinars. Freshly certified today is the Packaging Design Edition. My name is Amanda Bolte, and I'm the Creative Director from CDM, or Cineplex Digital Media. I'm an RGD, currently serving as a member of the Certification, certification Committee, excuse me, and I'm also a Certification Presenter, Presentation Reviewer. So if you have any questions for our presenters today, please use the question tab in the control panel. We will hold questions until the end, so the pan panelists are all able to present. To, as I said before, today's webinar is discussing certification, or the, sorry, discussing the RGD certification experience, but mainly focused around case study development and presentation. Our panel of recently certified, or freshly certified, RGDs working with the digital space We'll break down their case studies while, while why they chose it, the process of putting it together, gathering the assets to, re, to results, and how they choose to present it, focusing on packaging design. But first, for those who are interested in RGD and the overall certification process, let me do a general introduction. Victor? <laughs> Thank you. So RGD members are a community of 4,000 like-minded professionals, including firm owners, freelancers, managers, educators, and students, with access to professional development resources and a vibrant exchange of information. Through RGD, Canadian designers exchange ideas, educate and inspire, set professional standards, and build a strong, supportive community dedicated to advocating for the value of design. For more information about RGD and the resources available for members or the larger design community, please visit the website at rgd.ca. Next slide. Thank you. So to, as I said before, today we're talking about certification. So becoming a certified RGD. Becoming an RGD is broken down into four very easy steps. Filling out the application online to see if you're el eligible, taking an online test, the virtual online portfolio review, and the presentation of results from the RGD. Next slide. So our focus today is uh, the fun part, in my opinion. Uh, you know, all designers like to talk about their work and look at their work and look at others' work and get inspired by them. So we're going to be talking about the virtual online portfolio review. So this is where designers get to be designers. Portfolios are presented virtually. Um, over 30 minutes to three senior design practitioners serving as RGD reviewers. So you could see me in one of your online portfolio reviews. <clears throat> Candidates present the same six pieces submitted as part of the RGD certification application. During the review, you're asked to speak to all of the case studies within 30 minutes while going into depth in, on one of those six pieces. So first on my list today to present his work is Ronald Atau. Um, Ronald is a Chinese Canadian art director and graphic designer specialized in creating and visual identities. Born in Hong Kong, raised in Toronto, relocated to Beijing. I'm sure he misses traveling. Um, Ronald creates in, uh, creates in multicultural and creative contexts, crossing cultural border, borders through creativity and design. Ronald's work has been covered and or awarded in a variety of awards and media ranging from the Tokyo Type Directors Club, It's That Nice, It's Nice That in the UK, the Museum of New York, Asia Pacific Design in China, and Taiko Janchi, did I say that right? I hope so, yeah. in Korea. <laughs> Ronald founded and operated Meet Studios between Beijing and Toronto. Welcome, Ronald. Thank you, Amanda for introducing. Uh, okay, so my screen is showing right now, right? So it's showing me screen. Yeah, you're good to go now. Okay. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Ronald. Uh, so I'm here to share uh, one of my case studies, which I showed during the certification um, interview. Um, I was recently certified last year in June. Uh, um just around when the pandemic started so i had a bit of time to prepare so i'm going to go through one case study uh today with you guys um so quick introduction i do mainly visual identity design and today i'll be sharing a packaging project um 
so we do a variety of packaging so um i think it's it's quite fun for for me as well to um revisit um how i went through each project and just kind of share the fun parts of the project to the interviewers um and i think one thing to keep in mind is that um during these interviews we we have very limited time to go through each case study so it really is about um telling the story in a very succinct way um and perhaps we can't go very in depth but i think it's a few minutes is probably enough to communicate what drove us during the project themselves so i always start with uh just a very quick background briefing of the project so the project i'm talking about today is called paping machine it is a craft brewery based in beijing china which um, uh, serves craft beer to uh, restaurants and breweries across china so i also always start with a few you know key problems um, about the projects which the design set out to solve so um, for this brand they they that our competition and they frequently release new um, brews every week so their demand for design is very 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 frequent very intense but at the same time they have no in-house designers so these three kind of uh, facts or conditions if you will um, really drove how I and the studio started or approached um, the design. So um, during the presentation, I put into when I was putting together the presentation, I would go back and look at you know what are the three to five things that I can say or tell the uh, interviewers that makes this project unique. So I'm just gonna um, go through them here. So number one was that. I approached this um, packaging design project by finding the differentiation, um, and I call it design by contrast. So when we look at craft beer or beer, a lot of them, they exist on uh, either shelves or in, you know, like a website when you browse through them. And the selection, it's often very colorful, uh, very vibrant, very expressive. So even if you, you know, look on, look on Google, or just do a quick check of other breweries, they tend to be very, very in your face and very expressive. So together with the client, we decided to you know, take the stance of differentiation. It's uh, if they are something, then we will be that something else um, that drove the, the, the initial direction. And number two was that instead of being illustration driven, we wanted to be typography and information driven because um, they would release new brews so frequently. We wanted people to read about the brews and um, just learn about the beer itself. Number three is that um, by taking away illustration, what will we arrive at? We might arrive at something that would be very decidedly unexpressive and very toned down and uh, you know, exploring the idea of being brutally honest because there is nothing but the name and the fact of the beer present on the, the packaging. So this is what we arrived at. Um, just the name of the brew and the facts and the, you know, the quality of the beer uh, laid out in a very basic and all centered way. And the beauty of that is that, but the efficiency of that is that um, we could add text and uh, price and the time and date for the release of the brew and overlay the information on top of each other to create many variations. And together with simple color schemes, we can easily output um, different flavors very easily. So that graphics, which covers the promotional material immediately, you, you could just take it and wrap it around the packaging and the language begin, begins to form itself from that very bare bones approach. Here you see the, um, the sense of um, 
kind of uniformity and um, how it chooses to omit a lot of language that is uh, commonly used in the craft brewery um, industry. So um, the systemic and the sustainable design language was um, one of the most important uh, characteristics of this identity and packaging because it is essentially one layout system that can apply to all kinds of different uh, collateral beyond the packaging even. So just to quickly recap and to conclude, um, I think when we go over our case studies, uh, I think it's a good idea to think about uh, the content of what we're talking about, how, what, what qualities do they um, show in our process? So these are some questions I ask myself when I uh, know I have to talk about my projects. Um, so I'm just gonna go through all of them. Number one, what was the design problem that shows intention? And um, what were some opportunities that presented themselves based on that problem? And that could show uh, insight um, what were some challenges the client had? How we designers are raising the problem, and how did your design address these challenges? It shows a problem-solving skills. How did you arrive at your design language for the project? Uh, systemic approach. How did the client market respond to your designs? Uh, inquiry and investigation. How did your designs elevate the product service? Evaluation, how is your design culturally appropriate and relevant? Sensitivity, and how would you approach or not approach the project again differently? Reflection, I think it's, I think I especially like the last um, point because as I talked about the projects, I think, um, you know, instead of just to tooting my own horn, you know, we could um, reevaluate how, you know, if we were to do it again, how will we do it differently? And I think this kind of shows our, yeah, because we're trying to, you know, obtain this certification, I think it's good. It's a good idea to show that we are in a process of, you know, self-reflection and improvement. So, yeah, so I think this is, this is roughly how I think about how to talk about projects. It's probably a lot to uh, go through in just a few minutes, but I think if, you know, if you're able to go through these things, even if there's just a sentence each, I think it gives your case studies a lot of enough depth for the interviewers to to understand. And and that's it. That's it for me. Thank you, Sean. That was fantastic. Um, there we go. Back on. Um, that was fantastic. Uh, I have a I have a soft spot for beer packaging, and um, I really enjoyed the uh, your your thought process behind it and explaining um, the type of uh, typographic. Uh, really under uh, enunciating your role in the project, I think was really important as well too. And I really like this the conclusion on the end of it. I think it's really important to take your interviewers or your reviewers. Um, through the process, through your process, through your background and your history, and it always gives us more context. It's not always, um, it's not always required, but where you can do it, I think that really made for a strong um, presentation. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate thank you. that. Thank you. For, on a side note, kind of riffing off of Ronald, um, I believe it was on, it was, uh, I believe it was done during Design Thinkers this year. There was a fantastic speaker that talked about non-Latin, um, non-Latin lettering and typefacing, and, you, and the marriage of the two together was really great there. So, um, okay. So up next we have a day um, who has a fantastic name that I'm. I'm not going to go there. Ade is the founder, correct, a founder and creative director of Wido Creative Company, a creative solutions company that offers services to businesses and individuals in graphic designs, creative consulting and advisory, idea generation, brand development, corporate identity, digital and social solutions. 
printing and publishing, photography, and video production. In over 12 years of experience, he's executed projects with clients from different fields, such as the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President of Nigeria on Millennium Development Goals and Right Foods Limited, the now show Wedding Planner Magazine, Aero City, Agassiz, Interior Design Limited, Merit Abode Nigeria Limited, and Grand Square Supermarket. Thank you so much today. The floor is yours. Well, um, good evening, everybody. Again, and it's uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be a part of this uh, freshly certified uh, webinar. And I think the right off the bat, what I like to say is that uh, RGD gives us creatives a platform to really, you know, crystallize what it means to be a, a, either a graphic designer, a digital media designer, whatever aspect of graphic design or creativity that you are working on, uh, RGD gives us a platform to crystallize that and take ownership of how far we've come in this journey of uh, creativity. And much more than that, I think it also gives us a platform to build a community whereby we can gain the much deserved respect that every designer needs. Uh, one of the things that I've been struggling with as a designer is trying to get people to see that as a designer, we're not, we're not, we shouldn't be seen as an afterthought, but rather as part of the core of whatever it is you're trying to create. Uh, so having a platform like RGD that gives us designers and us creatives that platform to really, you know, respect ourselves first and also uh, get other people to give us the due respect because it's not a favor that um, they will be doing to us. It's actually, we are a very, very important part of whatever it is they're trying to build because of the uh, unique perspective that we bring on board with a different caliber of expertise that we have. So uh, what if anybody wants to join the RG, that's a very good point to consider because it's, it's, it's one of the best platforms I'm glad to be a part of. And uh, the, pro the, um, the project I'm going to be sharing today is, uh, okay, I don't know if everybody can see my screen. Yeah, we can see yeah. your screen. All right, good. So um, it's a label design project for Right Foods Limited. Right Foods Limited is one of the uh, indigenous uh, FMCG companies here in Nigeria. Oh, by the way, I'm currently in Nigeria. Um, I should have been in Calgary by now, but uh, the pandemic is slowing down a lot of travel. And uh, so I'm back in my home country for now until things can find some stability and I'll be able to travel to build my family in Calgary. But while here in Nigeria in 2016, I worked with uh, Rifles Limited to create uh, a label design for their new range of uh, soda or beverage drinks, depending on where, what part of the world you are. You are you are in in Nigeria here we call it beverages so it was a very good project that I was glad to work on and one of the reasons why this project was passionate to me was because the values of the company and my values align they are an indigenous Nigerian company and they do proudly Nigeria they pride themselves on the fact that they offer world-class products from a totally local base and I also like to push out the fact that good work can come out from Nigeria. All of my works have been done right from my base here in Nigeria, and I've been privileged to work with international brands. And when I found that this was their values, it made me, you know, excited to work on the project. So this is about designing the right label. The name of the company is Right Foods, so it's a play on words to use the word R-I-T-E, designing the right label. And as I go through the presentation, you get to understand why. So a little background to bring up up to speed as to how the project came about. In 2007, uh, Right Foods was incorporated and in March of 2008, their very first sausage roll, uh, uh, roll was uh, rolled off the production line and it began to sell. And it was a welcoming uh, Introdu introduction to the market because a lot of people actually liked it. They were targeting the young people in schools in, in Nigeria, and that was really a, a, a market that such products or such snacks was not available for at the moment. And 
the work, the reception was good. So this prompted them two years later to introduce the Biggie beef sausage roll. So keep an eye on this Biggie uh, product and the name because it shapes the entire pre uh, presentation as we go along. Two years after the first product, the roll, the second one, and it was the Biggie beef sausage roll, and it was introduced in January 20 of 2010. It became an instant success, and uh, today is one of the most popular sausage rolls on the Nigerian market when it comes to the FMCG, and that, that's the fast uh, consumer uh, moving goods uh, uh, category of uh, products. Now, to, a year after that, they introduced a unique variant. Now, this uh, background I'm giving is to show one thing about this brand is that they like to move fast and they like to introduce things fast. All this is going to play into why how we crafted the solutions that we had for them. And this was a unique kind of uh, uh, sausage roll, especially for people that like spicy food. Here in Nigeria, we eat a lot of spicy food and uh, the company felt, you know, why don't we introduce a product into the market that will play up on that uniqueness that we have that is you know putting spice in our food and a lot of people liked it and that also became one of the uh, one of the products that was now in the line of the different offerings that they had now uh i haven't done all of that since 2027 to 2011 they gradually climbed to up to be one of the most sought after brands when it came to sausage rolls, sausage rolls, because there are a lot of competitors out there, but they are one of the favorites because of the variety they offered and because of the quality of their products. And like I said, they truly pride themselves as a proud Nigerian company. So this is a, a picture of their factory, which uh, we paid a visit to just at the beginning of this project to really see what they had done and why they felt it was time to diversify and enter into the beverage and soda making uh, business, which is a very, very competitive market here in Nigeria. And realizing that, that there are a reason to do this, and this is how we defined uh, the problem, and why it was a visible project to embark on and to solve was that the sausages will go uh, very well with beverage or with a drink. And because there's a unique thing about uh, Nigeria, especially Lagos, where I'm based, is that there's a lot of traffic. And one of the things that happens when you're in traffic is that you get hungry. And here, there's a lot of street hawking that happens. So while you're in traffic, you could actually get to buy um, a snack and a drink that will make the traffic journey a little bit easier. So there was a lot of uh, options for people and this company haven't built on their uh, background of having successful products of sausage uh, rolls uh, snack in the market felt, you know what, let us also dive into the beverage and soda uh, market. And this was this one was made in 2014 and 2015. Uh, they started to construct the factory, which was a massive, massive factory. And that was when I, we got a call to come on board and we got a call to come on board and this was exactly what we were told that they needed a similar but different package design and they needed it in two weeks so no pressure for us why they needed a similar but different package design is that the the, the uniqueness of the market here in nigeria is that when a new product goes into the market, you want to make sure that it has some similarities with what is already existing. But if you can now make it different, then you have a winner, especially if the product is really good. So that was the task we were given and we we're supposed to do it in two weeks because the project was supposed to be for six months, but for five and a half months, they, they had tried two different outfits to try to get the packaging done, but they couldn't get it right and they weren't satisfied. So why was what, what, what was the reason for coming to us? The reason was because of this package right here. We had worked on the previous package design for the client, which was the Biggie Bite. It was another sausage roll that they introduced. So now in the space of five years, they had five different kinds of uh, sausage rolls and this was a successful design for them. So based on the success of this, they reached out to us to come and work on this, even though this was going to be done under immense pressure. Two weeks was not enough time, but we had to make it work. And the task was to create package design labels for the six different variants of the soda products that were introduced. And the requirements for the proposed labels was that one, it had to be colorful, it had to have an element of excitement, and the target market was the youths. 
and also a mandatory element, which is one of the uh, requirements that the, um, the managing director of the company wanted was that he wanted a picture of people that were partying and having fun. And he had to also have the Biggie logo mark because it was going to be the, 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 bucket, the, the, the beverages were going to be named Biggie. That was the founding, uh, the overall name, and then you had a different variant. So, well, no pressure went about, you know, trying to get it right. So, this slide actually shows the thinking behind how we put infused everything together to create a package. Since this was this, since these were carbonated um, soft drinks, we knew that if you uh, the unique thing with carbonated soft drinks uh, and or soda is that if you shake it a bit and then you open it, there's a fizz that uh, comes up and you know it erupts and all of that. So that could cater for the excitement. So if we found a way to introduce that element into the design, then we knew that we had the excitement because that will also be supported by the infusion of the uh, you know the people that were having fun and partying. So we found that okay, if we could use um, silhouettes of people that were dancing, infuse that also, and uh, the colored aspects of it because they were fruit variants. Every fruit in the in the in the genre was going to be colorful already. So it was just for us to pick a color palette from these fruits to infuse everything together and we could you know throw everything inside this pot and see what we came about. Because we had a very short time span, uh, what we did was to move our studio into the office of the client so that we could reduce the turnaround time if we needed any corrections, any approvals. It was just to have somebody on their communications team sit with us and then we could do a very fast job. And that actually helped save a lot of time because uh, in about a week and a half, we were able to come to terms to what the packaging design was going to be like. So um, this is showing all, all of them together. The following slides now show individual packages. Now, the similarities that they wanted was in the market right there, Coca-Cola and uh, it's the Pepsis were leading. And here in Nigeria, Coca-Cola is one of the leading brands. So they wanted something that if you put it side by side with Coca-Cola in terms of color, it looked similar, but there was an element of difference. So the way we could uh, achieve that difference, remember I said you should put in mind the Biggie logo, because they were going to be uh, duplicated on all of, all of the packages. We just made sure that the Biggie was bigger, was bigger than every other thing, because that was one of the requirements of of the clients and haven't infused the fizzy, uh, the fizzy feel, uh, the bubbles, the people dancing, we were able to come up with a template and a generic design that we knew that all we had to do next was to change the color variants based on the color of the fruits. By the way, the fruits pictures were already supplied by the clients. You know, I said that they had already gone to two different outfits, but along the way they were able to pick some things that they wanted so giving that to us we were able to infuse it together into uh, the labels that we came up with so going through each of them so that we could see a clearer a clearer um, a clearer image of each of the la labels so this is the cola variant uh right because they the, the, we have we we're working with a very tiny space all of this has to fit into uh a, a 35 millimeter uh, label that was that was really small, but that was the best that we could we could work with because that was the mold that was going to be used on the bottles. So this shows the cola variants at the background of the image. You could see the uh, the bubbles, the people partying, uh, you know, just speaking right there, and also the co the colors uh, that was synonymous to the the variants of the drink. And then we just duplicated this along the bitter lemon. Uh, flavors, the orange flavors, uh, the lime and lemon, sorry, the bitter lemon, the tropical fruits, which was a mixture of a lot of fruits. This is actually my favorite, by the way, uh, and also the apple. So another challenge that we faced was that because of the time constraints that we were, we were facing, we, there was no way we needed to take our product, proper product shots of the bottles, but because they were not ready, we had to create mock-ups from uh, rendered models. And when we showed it with the, to the client, they said, you know what, this is good enough. Let us cascade it to the other marketing materials that they needed because of the time frame." So the packaging design was done in a, a one and a half weeks. So the remaining few days were spent trying to design all the other marketing communications that I'm going to uh, put, show proof is, uh, 
subsequently. When the package actually uh, came out and the bottles were ready, they gave it to us and we took product shots of each of the packets. So this is what we were able to do. And this was used subsequently on their social media and other uh, marketing platforms that they needed to go. So some promotional materials that we were able to design based off what we came up with were the posters um, for each of the variants. There's a general theme that still has that uh, element of excitement, you know, which was what they were trying to push with this uh, range of products. So that element of excitement was kept through to create that synergy in the design and the elements and the templates so that it was easy to replicate because we knew that this was a one-off project, but we're going to hand over all the assets to the clients for either their in-house designers to continue the project based off what we had created. So we also had to create other things for uh, the people that would distribute. Now, it's important that I also mention here that one of the um, strategies that we found could work was because they had already created an inroad in the market because of the popularity of their sausage roll snacks. It was just for us to put this as a an addition to that. So anywhere you saw their sausage roll snacks, you also saw their drinks. So we had to make coolers and chillers for people that would market it so they could have cold drinks because of the hot weather most of most of the time in the year. So if you were buying a sausage drink, it was very easy to also get uh, a sausage roll. It was also easy to get a drink. And we also, factored in the kids and design exercise books for them because the, the first success of uh, the, the brand was through the uh, school kids and having exercise books for the kids was also a way to, you know, endanger, uh, endear that to them. We also had came up with roller banner designs for uh, road shows, marketing communications in places and publicity in stores where the products were going to be displayed. There was a lot of information about the new product, so we came up with uh, information stands also for people to get information. And right close to that was also a taster table where you could actually taste the different variants of the drink. All through the elements, we kept that element of uh, excitement, the fizziness, the sweaty bottle look, just to create that fun sense of thirst for people who saw it and you know that actually succeeded. We also spread to rulers, virus, pencils, uh, outdoor sales, umbrellas for people to sell and still be comfortable while they sold the drinks with their coolers. And then people needed uh, transportation to move the drinks around. So we came up with also designs for that. Both the 10 ton trucks and the minimum drug. Now, rounding up this uh, ex expose, what I, we also did was to measure the success that, okay, fine, we did this in 2016, we handed over the project uh, in 2016. What has happened since then? We found out that in the time since then, they have added to the uh, so the line of products, like I said, they, they are in the habit of creating new things and introducing new variants to the market. So a soda variant, a Chapman variant, and also a you know premium drinking water variant has been added since then. So what they did was just to take the template of what we had created and give their in-house designers to continue in that same line, which is which is which is a success story for us because when they came in, they were newcomers, but by 2020. 2019, they were one of the leading uh, beverage uh, drinks that people actually wanted in the market. And also due to the acceptance rate of the product, they also introduced seasonal pop-up flavors where maybe during Easter or during one of the holidays, they would just come up with a, a, a pop-up flavor or two and put into the market just for that season. So they came up with the cherry cola and the biggie ginger lemon, all still following that same template. But I have a successful this other uh, other uh, introductions where everything is based on the successful package designs of the founding flavors. And finally, as, uh, as a personal um, success story for us, it's always interesting and very fulfilling when you walk on the street and see random people you do not know, you know, having a refreshment with something that you design. There is no greater feeling than helping the client make a lot of money but also having the satisfaction that you did a good job because it's generally accepted by everyone. So uh, that's that's the presentation, and I'd like to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.
you so, so much, Jay. Um, I appreciate that. Sorry. Um, I think that it's important to. I really liked the journey. I liked the amount of um, the amount of information that you put into the uh, into the case study. Um, I do want to say, Prof, that not not all designs, like not all um, presentations, will have that much material and that was fantastic especially walking us all the way through it um don't be uh like don't be worried that you don't have that much but it's really really good to understand that you're a designer talking to, to designers and you can get into that really knit and gritty you can get you can get down to the the, the real business problems because we understand um, the perspectives that they're coming from. And I think that's really important to say, um, especially with when you're getting that down details. Um, someone did ask, and I, I promise I'd keep questions at the end, but this one's specifically for you. Uh, someone okay. wanted to know where you're, you're sourcing your mock-ups from. Okay, um, well, it's, it's two ways. Sometimes I create them from scratch by just taking the pictures of uh, the item I'm going to actually use to create the mock-ups and then I build on that also. Um, then other ways, uh, google.com is a very big repository. You just, all you need to do is type the kind of mockup you want uh, in the format, either you want it in a PSD or uh, you know a vector format. And you, there's a lot of free materials out there that you can use to actually create a, a very good uh, result to present to your clients because it's, it's good to ask this question because mock-ups could actually be what tells the client to make the decision to go with the design because when it's flat it's flat but they don't see like us we can see a flat design and in our mind we know how it's going to look at the end but they are about making business decisions you need to help them to make that decisions and sometimes not just any our mock-ups a very good mock-up can help you tilt the decision in the in, in your favor Awesome, thank you so much. So next up, um, we have Jordan Banford. Uh, Jordan is an art director with Deloitte, uh, Deloitte, De Deloitte, Deloitte Canada, um, and an award-winning designer with 20 years of creative experience. Jordan specializes in creative leadership, branding, strategy, and package design. Jordan will be talking about his package design for Love Tread. So Jordan, I can't wait to hear. Hi, everybody. Okay, I'm just uh, sharing my screen. Yeah, so um, as Amanda mentioned, I'm currently an art director with uh, Deloitte Canada. Uh, previously, I was the uh, creative director at uh, Bose All Natural Brewing Company. Um, Sorry, Jordan, it's not and, full screen. Uh, it's not full screen? Yeah, you can see my webinar control panel, right? No, we can't see your control panel, but it seems like it's stuck on go. Oh, there we go. I'll try to move. Perfect. Oh, now we can't hear you. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to review my case study today for the lug tread logger ale packaging uh, that I produced back in. Hi there, are you able to hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. Okay, great. Please please let me know if that uh, doesn't continue. Um, okay. There we go. So, um, great. Um, so yeah, why did I uh, choose this uh, case study? Um, well, I think for, for me specifically, I wanted to showcase something that had multiple print production processes in it. And again, before I got into building my case studies, I, I really wanted to be selective about what I was um, best for efficiency, right? So I wanted to studies for my RGD application. I also wanted to build this, uh, build these case studies so that I could use them uh, in in portfolio presentations. Um, 
uh, to, while, while uh, searching for a new job. And I also, uh, through this process, you know, wanted to make sure that um, I was being conscious about how much time I was spending on this. So, um, yeah, I really use the um, I really use the case study template as the guide to uh, how I would approach my uh, my portfolio presentation on screen and, and use those um, use those different categories um, to, to to build my um, to build my presentation. Um, so yeah, I chose this because of the multiple print production processes. I also picked it because it was a high profile fun project, so I thought it would be be interesting to um, to the presenters. Um, also, again, if you're looking at um, packaging, this is very uh, a, a very good project to be able to uh, have trackable results, right? Uh, these are generally attached to uh, consumer packaged goods, so you can you can really track the effectiveness of of the increase in sales that that's caused. Um, and uh, I also chose you know projects that have been recognized. So this project was recognized by the LCBO for uh, the best product. Uh, launch um, back in 2017, um, as well as with an RGD in-house awards. Um, so yeah, I think trying to pick projects that, that do have that aspect of them. And, you know, I think there's lots of great um, workplace initiative uh, or workplace recognitions that you could, you could also consider as well. I know Deloitte, we have something called the Green Globes, where we recognize our work from the previous year. Uh, I also selected this one because, again, it, uh, the, the work is had nice photography uh, uh, taken of it. So, you know, it was really kind of easy to present that way. I didn't really want to get into the weeds too much with the, uh, the, the technical layouts. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really wanted to kind of focus on the finished project. So I think one of the things that uh, was, was, was challenging to me or maybe um, a bit concerning was just the, how, how quick the portfolio presentation timeline is. So I really wanted to make sure that when I was writing my case studies down, that I could easily transition my notes from that into, into a presentation. Um, so the first part of the, um, the first, first category of the case study is the challenge or the goal, right? So, you know, this is really the main objective of the, the project. And, and I really tried to kind of keep this brief down to two to three points. So, in this case, it was to successfully launch a new packaging format for an existing brand. So um, we were going to launch uh, cans for a uh, for an existing brand called Lugtread. So uh, we also needed to redesign the existing packaging format, the bottles, uh, to match the new can packaging. Um, and then in general, we wanted to get a general lift um, on the existing brand. With this, with this redesign, so uh, we're losing me again, George. What I like you was saying about, um, you know. and excitement you know we really needed to make it so that it was a continuation of the brand so it was recognizable but that it also kind of stood can you hear me now can hear you now yep is there anybody out there yeah we can hear you now oh dear Okay, great. Um, yeah, so moving on to the, okay. So any kind of unique, uh, unique tidbits or unique points that, that make this project different. Um, I mean, for, for this one specifically, the step-by-step, -step, I mean, one of the big parts was gathering all the technical information and specifications from suppliers because we're dealing with um, 
paper labels, glue, um, car cardboard manufacturers, uh, can manufacturers. So, you know, we really had to gather a lot of information. Um, we also needed to consult a lot with internal stakeholders within the company to kind of, you know, really understand the equipment, uh, the manufacturing equipment, the packaging equipment that puts the beer into the containers and then those containers into boxes. So, you know, we really had to kind of fit within those those sandboxes. So that created uh, challenges and we had to understand that. And then, you know, as this was also an, uh, a, an evolution of existing packaging, um, we also took that as an opportunity to identify, was there anything that we could do to increase efficiency? Right, so there could be another trackable metric that you could include in this presentation if you're dealing specifically with packaging. Is you know, um, you know, is there efficiency improvements that would then increase profitability for a business? Um, we also, you know, did a landscape scan of competitors. So really, an and we also did an analysis of the existing packaging to kind of critique that and use that as a starting point. Um, and then the consultation as well with sales and marketing, right? So a lot of the methodology involved a lot of uh, research and a lot of uh, information gathering with, with many stakeholders, internal, external, um, yeah. Uh, the next part is the design process. So this is really the step-by-step -step of how you reached your solution uh, and follows the key steps. And again, I think keep it simple. You don't wanna get too much into the weeds. Um, in this case, you know, what really uh, came to the forefront in this was the, the use of a standalone tractor um, and also using the panoramic uh, nature of the, of the can, um, you know, having that image wrap around the can to, to give it that, that 3D effect. That then also translated um, onto how we applied the, the image to the box as well. Um, so yeah, walking through that, you know, we, 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 we developed the brand of this tractor, we applied it to the different uh, surfaces, um, and that tractor illustration ended up influencing things like, uh, like the, the, um, the cutting dies that um, uh, make, make up the box, um, making sure that those are customized, and, and as well, kind of just going through all of the stakeholder feedback. I, I will maybe note something else, too, that stuck, stood out to me on the... Um, uh, just on the criteria of these presentations was, you know, really talking about what your contribution is to the process. And I think to simplify that for me, especially when you work on a lot of projects with big teams is, is really trying to focus in on uh, the projects where, you know, you're really the lead designer um, and really kind of taking, uh, doing a lot of the work yourself. Um, and then the last, uh, the, the second last, uh, section of the uh, case study um, uh, categories is the, uh, the solution. So this is really your classic uh, design rationale and, and explains why uh, the design works. Um, so yeah, in this case, you know, I think we focused on something that is simple and sophisticated um, and, and really supports the Lugtred brand as the focal point um, with the Bose brand sort of taking, taking a back step at this point or back seat at this point. Um, we put that lug tread tractor uh, front and center, so you know establishing it as the main uh, the main visual element of the brand, um, and that that sort of detailed uh, tractor schematic drawing has become e iconic in its own right. Um, so it's been featured in merchandise such as T-shirts, glassware, uh, and skateboards. Um, and then wrapping the tractor around the uh, the can, um, you know, it, it, uh, or, or around the surfaces, not just the can, but also the cardboard, it does create a visual interest within each one of these uh, packaging items. Um, so this really highlights the three dimensionality of the, uh, of the packaging items, um, and it creates a unity amongst these, you know, three very different uh, elements, right? The bottle box, the individual can, and then the can carrier. Um, and uh, lastly, um, you know, the material selection in terms of a solution, you know, was really intentional to be able to reinforce um, the, the uh, all natural ingredients used in the beer um, and the artisanal approach to brewing. Um, so yeah, we wanted to have on bleached recycled cardboard used. Um, the labels are 100% uh, recycled paper. 
uh, the cotton ribbon, uh, and then adding a matte finish to the can. So the last section of the um, uh, of the case study is is the results or the impact. And so you know this is this is again where I think packaging can maybe be a little bit more descriptive than others. So in, in this instance, you know. The sales on the sales side, they, the the client did see a double-digit year-over-year increase uh, in LCBO sales uh, with the introduction of this uh, the new packaging. Um, we have the the awards to kind of note, so best new product launch in the LCBO uh, and uh, the RGD in-house uh, award of distinction. Um, so yeah, that uh, that is my case study. That excellent, thank you, Jordan. Um, I'm going to come back on now. Um, I know I've done um, quite a number of uh, beer projects and beer packaging time in my in my day, and I do know that that goes label is an, it's a it's an industry standard. So thank you for bringing that into the design community and and walking through. Um, I liked your point about creating these case studies as as a means for like as while you were doing a job search. So um, I think that's an important note to, to really you're collecting your thoughts and you're putting them kind of together for these um, for a job search, but doing this at the exact same time. I think there's a lot of opportunity um, for people to do that as well. Um, and uh, owning those trackable results. I know during the certification process and, and during the review process, I love numbers. And I know that, you know, showing how the work um, really lives is great. So, uh, fantastic. So, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna end up here with uh, Kaylee. I know there is a couple of questions, so um, I'm, we may go over time. So, I appreciate everybody's time if you're able to stay with us. Um, Kaylee has over five years of work experience as a graphic designer and has tackled a variety of rewarding in-house and freelance design projects from research to execution. She's constantly challenging herself by working in many areas of design, such as packaging, print, branding, web, motion graphics, and product design. In her free time, Kaylee continues to express her creativity by running an Etsy card shop, crafting and customizing gifts for her friends and family. Kaylee, I can't wait to see what you've got. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, let me. Can you see my screen? Yep, but uh, Abdul, you've got me and not Kaylee. You're good to go. Okay, okay so um, I've worked in house uh, for over five years now at 360 Athletics. Sorry, um, Kaylee, I can't see you on webcam yet. Oh. I just sent you the webcam request. Okay, one second. Perfect. Um, okay. Um, so 360 Athletics is a sporting goods and fitness and recovery equipment uh, distributor located in Oakville. Um, I've worked in-house there for a little over five years now. And one of their main brands that they focus on is CoreFX. So I'm gonna show you the CoreFX packaging lineup today. Um, I just wanted to note that for my certification presentation, I actually just showed it on my website but I showed the same six images I'm gonna show you today. So that's one option for you if you're planning to um, get certified is by just showing the images on your website. That's how I did it. Um, so I'm just gonna flip through first so you can get a feel for the packaging. So CoreFX is a high quality um, functional training equipment. Um, they focus towards uh, gym rats, uh, personal trainers, fitness enthusiasts um, across Canada. It's featured in retail stores as well as gyms. Um, so we wanted to showcase the brand and really represent the, uh, the quality, the, um, the intense strength uh, equipment here. And one challenge that I faced was that it's a wide range of product, products, as you can see. So there's small items there like the skipping rope or there's bigger weighted items. So we had to come up with kind of a structure design as well as the graphic design for each product. Um, overall, there's over 35 products that we've designed, but I'm just gonna showcase a few today. 
So for the look of it, we went with a grayscale photography with a pop of red. Um, so this showcases the brand really well because Corifex is known for its brand colors. Um, all of the equipment is in red and black. So we really wanted to, to have that carry through in the packaging. Um, we also had a spot gloss UV finish on the um, fitness models, the equipment and the logo to make them pop and stand out against the competitors on the shelf. So starting here on the advanced toner on the left, we had like a window to showcase the quality um, and same thing for the power tube in the middle. So that way consumers can actually feel the product. Um, the handles are in there secure on the side to keep the product in place. And the speed ropes, uh, one of them is shown here, are also following that looped um, on the board effect so that consumers can actually see the tangible product in the store. I'm going to go ahead here. So the muscle activator in the top left was one of the most challenging, I would say, to come up with. Um, we really wanted to showcase the texture of the massage ball um, and the material. So I came up with this uh, triangular prism box design that can also be hung. Uh, so it can be hung in store or on the shelves, displayed nicely. And that way, consumers can actually feel the quality of the massage ball. Um, and I really liked how, because there was limited space on the side, we actually just had both triangles on the sides, just solid red, which added that contrast and really represented core effects. Um, it's a unique design for uh, the packaging. And then underneath here is the strength loop. It's the strength loop in the bottom left corner. Um, so the strength loop is made of a durable material and has an actual grip on the inside, which we wanted consumers to be able to feel the quality, but we didn't want it to be where in store the band's falling out or looks messy. We really wanted it to be held intact um, and we wanted to maximize the graphic space while minimizing um, the actual material. So this is what we came up with. So this allowed the fitness model on the front here um, to demonstrate the product. And the actual packaging structure itself kind of weaves through the folded band to keep it in place. Um, so I think that worked well. The structure does up at the back. So that way we had to put the sizing chart on the side there, but it fits nicely. And I think it really represents the brand and stands out hung in a retail environment. And then on the right here are the Pro Loops individual packaging. For this one, um, I came up with this board, which has, as you can see, there's slits on the right, the left, and then two more on the right. So this way, the band kind of intertwines throughout the board um, to help keep it in place. Uh, so it's very difficult to actually get off of there, um, which is good for in a retail environment. And this also allowed for that open space on the back, which had a fitness model and a few call outs about the product. And these are the last few to show. So there's the um, four pack of Pro Loops here. Um, on the left is the ultra wide Pro Loops. And we wanted to show like all four colors, um, but we didn't need to show them in a large scale. Like people will get the idea and we wanted a small compact box. So we had this window and had one um, band featured on the left here. And then I had the other three products kind of rolled up in the insert on the side so you could see the color and see that it's a four pack without it being too much. This also allowed for a lot of graphics on the back. And then the dual surface gliders here, um, we wanted to showcase the texture again. So we have this window that customers can actually feel the product. Um, the What's interesting about working in-house at this company is I get to be at all the photo shoots uh, with the models and stuff. So with this one, we I told the creative director and um, photographer that I wanted the model to be posed in that way because I wanted the cutout to be parallel to her hand. So that's why she was kind of posed like that. Also, that allowed me to Photoshop that image there. So it kind of shows the two different flooring, the carpet and the wood um, that this glider works with. And then again, on the back, we have um, calling out to, to different features. Um, overall, I think it looks really well together. It's unified, even though they're all different shapes 
and sizes. Um, I think it goes well together and represents the brand core effects. Um, so that's how I did my presentation. I, again, mentioned it that I um, did it on the website. So that's how I flipped through just those six images. And I kind of spoke through it like that, just speaking about the case study. Um, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kaylee. I think it's really, I think it's really, um, really important to know that um, different people have different ways of setting things up, whether it's keynote, website, um, PowerPoint, PDF, uh, you know, whatever, get, whatever you're most comfortable with and, and presenting your work um, is really important. So I do have a couple of questions that have come through. So um, I, uh, Abdul, I don't know if we can get everybody up on the screen who's still here. I know Ronald had to leave. Missing a day. There he is. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, so Hi. a couple of questions. Um, one that come up, uh, I will ask. Um, let's see, Jordan. How long does it take to pre uh, prepare the portfolio and application? How long does it take you? Um, I mean, it's it's a, it could be a big range, right? And like I said, I tried to I tried to build. Um, build my approach for, for kind of speed. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of set myself a, a, a limit of, uh, in the evenings. I, I tried to do like my, um, write my case study in one evening, again, kind of very focused on bullet points for each one. And then the second evening I would, I would try to compile everything into, uh, into a layout. And again, really focus in on, I think that the key pieces that the key parts that would really, uh, demonstrate the work. But again, I I really uh, I really enjoyed um, uh, Adeleke's journey through uh, through that brand, and I think that that gave it such a great story that um, you know I think told the whole picture of of what design means in the in the sales and marketing and brand journey. So I don't think there's one right way to do it. It's kind of what what feels right for you and and where your um, you know what you want to do with it right so yeah exactly yeah thank you for that and did you want to um, add anything like how long yeah, did it take uh, together okay um putting that um in answering the same question you know um there's some creatives like myself who are in a lot of things at the same time so that can affect you know get into that space where you're focused on putting together a portfolio. So it really took me about close to a month, not because it couldn't take shorter, but because I was doing a whole lot of things. But when I actually got into that space, I found out that it allowed me to crystallize my thought. And I focused more on the writing aspect first, you know, because um, I, I, for me, all the part of that, when it's like I put my thoughts into like a story form or something I can read, it, then the words become pictures that I began, okay, this picture will go here, this picture will fit into this space. So uh, so that was the approach I kind of used. So taking away the times I was distracted trying to execute other projects, I would say it took me about uh, two to three weeks just to make sure that I dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and you know I wasn't speaking out of point to make sure that it was easy for whoever was going to read it to read it and not get bored. Well, in that case study too, I think would work really well in different scenarios, which I think is kind of like another power of this process. Like you could use that in, in a in a pitch to a potential client. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like mm -hmm. it, it has a lot of the, the value for the investment is is quite high. It, it, yes. As well. Yes. So. Yes. Yes, that's true. That's very true. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Kaylee, a uh, question for you is what would you say to someone who's having a hard time getting started in the process? Hmm. Um, I think just push yourself to do it. Um, it's rewarding. It's also, it's rewarding in so many ways because not only does it help get you certified, um, but also for me, it was like updating my website so that I could use it for that. It was just like pushing me to do things that I had been putting off for a while, um, updating, updating your portfolio, kind of gathering your um, images. So that's really nice and motivating. That's what I found motivating about it. Um, so yeah, that's what pushed me. <laughs> Jordan, Adele, do you guys have any advice for people who are you know, just on the fence or procrastinating or? 
Okay. Um, I, I mean, quick. Okay, Jordan, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Jordan, go ahead. Um, I think I think like it took me over fifteen years of being a practicing graphic designer before before doing it. So I am like the case study of procrastination on this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was something that I always wanted to do. And I'm so happy that I do it now. And it's, it's just, uh, it's rewarding to kind of have that, um, like in your email signature on your LinkedIn profile. Um, and I think too, like for me, it was really about um, taking my career to, to a new place. And I think that helped give me some uh, confidence going into uh, interviews. And I, I think does give a distinction from uh, competitors as well, especially in an in-house environment where the decision makers aren't necessarily designers, right? They see that and that gives, uh, you know, some confidence to, to them. Um, and then I think, I, I, I think kind of the, the, you know, once the motivation is there, it's, it's kind of like, okay, how do I make it from a thought to, to making it happen? And like I said, I tried to set myself a time limit. Um, I did, I took like, a, I took a week off of work which is like the worst, is it the worst vacation ever? But that's kind of what I did for a week, right? Is I worked on my resume, I worked on my portfolio and I worked on my RGD application and, you know, tried to make sure one evening, you know, get, get one done a day or get one done in the evening, that type of approach. So, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. So you're you're well, taking well. a vacation for yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I have a magazine here. It's my favorite magazine, actually. It's a computer arts magazine, May 2014, and it's titled The Global Issue. What this changed my mindset about design, because it says that you can win work overseas. You know, you can be so good at what you do that you plateau and you're just in a comfortable zone. But there, look, we're sitting here because of RGD. I'm meeting Kaylee, I'm meeting Jordan. Jordan, by the way, I'll be reaching out to you because I love your work, you know? You know, and this is what RGD gives you. It gives you a totally different platform to play, to meet, to collaborate, you know, with people. And so for me, uh, I was on the fence because I doubted I was good enough. And there are some creatives that are very good, but because they don't believe that they are that good, they hold back. So you need to overcome that barrier to think you're good. What's the worst that could happen? Somebody will tell you the work wasn't good. Not that you are in good, the work. So you just get better. So this was also to prove to myself that I was good enough, you know. And honestly, once you can cross that barrier of self-doubt, there is no limit to how creative you can be, you know. So one thing the RGD process will take, take will do to you, it will stretch you. It will take away everything that you doubted about yourself because writing the portfolio review is you have to know what you're talking about and you're going to be the one to benefit at the end of the day not only in your creative journey in the way you think about yourself but there is is like a big door that is locked once you open it you see the amount of opportunities that you can benefit from so if you're on the fence let me just push you in jump into <laughs> it and, <laughs> and you know and get it done you know that's that's what i'll say i don't think that we could end on a better note i think that it's really important <laughs> Everyone, um, like as far as the reviewers and the people who are, are, are going through the journey during the presentation um, process with you, we're here. We want you, we really want you to succeed. Um, and I know that uh, Heidi and uh, um, Heidi and Hillary work very, very hard to um, create that community for us as well, too. Um, so, uh, Jordan, Adai, I, I, Kaylee, Rob, you guys were awesome. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, I hope everybody stays safe out there. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye bye, guys. Bye. Bye. bye.